guys you're welcome back to my channel today thank you so much for stopping by in this video we'll be cutting and sewing this bustier crop top that you can see on your screen if you're interested keep on watching and let's get started i already have my pattern paper on my work table and this top is like an off shoulder top okay so i'm going to be taking out five inches you can do five or six inches before you start placing your points the first point i'll take is the distance from my shoulder to my bust point which is 10 inches the next point is distance from my shoulder to my under bust point which is 13 inches the next point is distance from my waist to my waist point my actual waist point is 16 inches but i added one into it after marking all these points i'll go ahead and rule straight lines across the next thing is to determine the length of the front so this top has like a basque waistline on the front so i'll go down by 20 inches remember i took out the 5 inches before going out by 20 inches after doing that i'm going to label all my lines so the start of this pattern paper is my chest line then i have my bust point my under bust point and my waist point the next thing i'll do is to take my bust pan measurement which is my nipple to nipple measurement divided by 2 mine is 4 inches i'll place the 4 inches on the bust point and i'll add half inch to it okay for stitching allowance so i'm marking 4.5 inches on the bust point on the under bust point and on the waist point after doing that i'm going to connect the three dots into a straight line so guys after connecting the dots into a straight line the next thing i'll do is to place the same measurement that i have on my bust line remember i placed 4.5 inches on the bust line i'm going to add one inch to that measurement making it 5.5 inches i'll place that on the chest line so whatever your bust pan measurement is plus half inch go ahead and add one inch to that measurement and place it on the chest line after doing that i'll connect from that point to meet the bust line just like you see me doing after doing that guys next thing we are going to do is to alter this into a bustier pattern so what i'm going to do is to place my tape on the under bust line so on the side i'll take one inch just like you see me doing on the center front i'll take half an inch okay i'm doing this on my under bust line i'll go down on the waist line and i'll take half an inch on the center front like this and on the other side i'll take one and a half inches just like you see me doing after doing that i'll use my ruler to connect from the under bust point to meet the waistline like this and then i'll connect on this other side into a straight line after doing that guys next thing i'm going to do is to place my tape on the bust point and i'll go down by one inch and then i'm going to use the curve part of my ruler to connect like this so whatever you do make sure the curve is not too deep i'll connect like this and on this other end i'll just straighten the lines like this so guys next thing i'll do is to tighten my over bust so i'm going to place my tape like this on the center front and i'll go out by one inch from that that leg and on this other side i'll go out by 0.75 inches like this and then i'll use my ruler to connect from that point to meet the bust line just like you see me doing after doing that guys this is what i have the next thing i'll do is to blend the darts into the bust um line just like you see me doing after doing that guys i'll go ahead and start placing my measurements on the chest line i'll place my bust circumference divided by four i'm going to mark out this dart and i'll replace it after doing that go ahead and add your stitching allowance but i don't have enough um, pattern paper so i'll be adding my stitching allowance on the fabric on the under bust point place your under bust circumference divided by four replace the dart and add your stitching allowance on the waistline place your um, waist circumference divided by four replace the dots and then add your stitching allowance after doing that i'm going to connect the dots like this after doing that guys next thing i'm going to do is to go down on this armhole area by half an inch or if you like you can do one inch okay so that the armhole area will sit well by the time you are done sewing i'll just connect it into the dart leg like this 
the next thing i'll do guys is to create the basque waistline i'll go ahead and extend this four inches mark that i came down with from the waistline after doing that i'm going to extend my dark leg i'll place the same dart measurement that i have on both sides of the straight line just like you see me doing and then i'm going to slant from the waistline to meet that point so i decided to make it instead of three inches i decided to make it like four inches so however you want the basque waistline to be go ahead and do it so i went ahead to just slant like this i added one inch to the three inches after doing that guys i'll go ahead and cut so pay close attention so you know where to cut After cutting guys, this is what I have, okay, I have the center front and the side front, so I'm going to label the center front and the side front. So if you check the picture that we are following, you see that the center front has like a little sweet at um, neckline on the center front. So what I'm going to do is to go down by one inch. So it depends on how deep you want your own sweet at neckline to be and it depends on how you want the shape to be. For me, I just went down by one inch. I'm going to slant to the other side. If you don't want to slant, you can use your hand to create like a curve. Just curve with your free hand to meet um, the center from whatever you want to do with it so after doing that guys i'll go ahead and cut that part out the next thing i'm going to do is to place my pattern paper on my fabric to cut out the back so i don't have enough pattern paper i'm going to be cutting the back on my main fabric so what i'll do is to go ahead and place my fabric into two and then i'm going to place this pattern paper on the fabric so look at the way i'm going to place the pattern paper so this is my fabric i'll go ahead and fold it into two just like you see me doing so if you want to add the zipper to your top go ahead and mark out the zipper allowance okay of about one inch i'll be adding a zipper to mine so i'll go ahead and mark one inch i'll connect into a straight line after doing that i'm going to first of all go ahead and place my center front on it immediately after the zipper allowance so remember i already marked out one inch from the center front okay because i cut out one inch for the sweetheart neckline so i'm going to place it in such a way that the other end that see has the one inch is just going to be on the table it's not going to be on the fabric in case you don't understand what i'm doing just what i'm saying just look at what i'm doing so the back is going to stop at the waist and you can see that i did not extend the back to the basque waistline that we have in front and for the other side i'm just going to pin the bustier part a little bit okay just look at what i'm doing and i left the dart area after doing that i'll go ahead and pin all the way around after pinning i'm going to go ahead and add my stitching allowance remember i said i did not add stitching allowance to the um fabric because sorry to the pattern paper because i didn't have enough pattern paper so i went ahead to add one inch to the side which is going to serve as my stitching allowance after doing that guys i'm just going to go ahead and cut so in case you are confused just go ahead and draft out the back on a pattern paper the normal way the way we drafted out the front go ahead and draft out the back the only difference is the back does not have this um posterior effect that is just the difference so if you cannot do this just draft it the normal way so i've gone ahead to remove my pattern papers what i'll do is to take in my dart remember i left the space on the dart so i'm going to take my nipple to nipple um, measurement divided by two i'm not going to add a thing just like we did for the front okay then i'll determine how long my dart is supposed to be so i'm taking out the five inches just like we did for the front and i'm marking my bust point after doing that guys i'm going to rule a straight line across the um, bust line and then i'm going to go ahead and take in my dart so half of my nipple to nipple measurement is four inches i'll place that and then i'll connect to meet the waistline in a straight line after doing that i'm going to take half an inch on both sides of the dart and i'll connect back to meet the bust line and yeah after doing that i'll just go ahead and notch the um the dart so i know where to take in my dart when i'm sewing on my machine so guys next thing i'll do is to adjust the zipper area so i have one inch as my zipper allowance i'm going to go inward by half an inch on the waistline 
and then i'll connect back to meet um the upper part of this fabric just like you see me doing this is to avoid um zip bulge i'll cut it out after doing that and the next thing i'll do is to reduce this back you know the front and the back is not supposed to be the same so the top is not going to fold on the m area so what i'll do is to go up by one inch on the center front after doing that i will indicate the one inch with um my chalk and then i'm going to connect back to the waistline on the side so make sure you are not cutting out the side just slant it to meet the side because the side of the front and the back is supposed to meet and it's supposed to be the same after doing that i've gone ahead to cut and i've notched my dart again so i know where to take in my dart so if you want the back to remain like this you can leave it but for me i went down by one inch on the back and i'm just going to curve it out okay because i don't want the back to be straight that is all i hope you guys are not confused after cutting guys this is what i have so guys i went ahead to use my pattern paper to cut out the front and i forgot to add my stitching allowance on the side just that my fabric is a bit stretchy so don't forget to do that except you added your stitching allowance to your pattern paper and your center front should be on fold do not forget that so after cutting this is what i have my center front is on fold i have one piece as my main piece and i have my lining piece and for the side front i have two main piece and two lining piece okay the side front is not on fold i'm going to open it up for you guys to see so this is what i have the next thing i'm going to do is to keep the lining aside and we're going to work on the main fabric if you have a stay go ahead and iron a stay to your fabric before you start sewing but i'm not going to add anything to mine because my fabric is quite thick so what i'm going to do is to place them like this right sides facing right sides okay and i'll go ahead and pin okay make sure that everything matches up i'll pin all the way down and then i'll repeat the same process for the other side after pinning guys i'm going to use the half an inch that we left as the st um, stitching allowance i'll use the half an inch to sew all the way and i'll also go ahead and repeat the same process for my lining piece so guys for the back piece um i realized that i didn't have any zipper to use so i'm just going to um use loop for the back so what i'm going to do is to cut out the zipper allowance so the zipper allowance that i added um earlier was one inch and i took out half an inch on the waist area so i'm going to mark the half an inch that is left on the waist area as you can see and i'm going to determine how open i want the back of my top to be so i'll be going out by one inch okay i'm taking out one inch from the back so for the back i still have the one inch and i'm taking out one inch that is on the neckline area so i marked two inches on the neckline area and one and a half inches on the waist area because i already took out half an inch before on the waist area i'm going to connect into a straight line just like you see me doing and then i'm going to cut this out so it depends on how open you want the back of your top to be so uh, since i'll be adding loop i'm not going to take in my darts i'm going to convert the um that allowance into my sewing allowance okay there's no need for me to take in my darts once i open it up guys this is what i have so what i'm going to do is to use my bias to pipe the neckline and then i'm going to use the bias also to cut out loops that i'll be using for the back i'll fold the bias into two like this and i'll run a straight stitch on it that is what i'll be using to create my loop the next thing i'll do is to determine the distance i want from one loop to the other one so what i'll do is to place my tape on the neckline and i'll go down by half an inch this half an inch is the allowance that i'll be using to pipe my neckline 
okay if you're adding um, lining still leave the half an inch so you use it to join your lining and the main piece from that point i'll go out by one inch i'll come down by one inch at different intervals so the distance between one loop and the other one is half an inch and make sure you also leave about half an inch on the base so you can m the base of your top i hope you understand so guys i've gone ahead to sew the front in place and this is what i have you can see what it looks like because i did not iron s to it neither did i pad it with a wording so this is what the lining also looks like the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and not the under bust okay so everything stays flat after doing that i'm going to use my tailor's arm to iron i'll iron the bustier part open okay so just make sure you iron the seam allowance open in case you don't have a tailor's arm i have a detailed tutorial on how to make your own tailor's arm is in the comment section go ahead and watch that tutorial so guys i've gone ahead to pipe the neckline for the back and this is what it looks like what i'm going to do now is to cut my loops and i'll start placing the loops on the lines so i've gone ahead to sew the bias in place like i said before so i'm going to cut it out so i'll be using two inches for um the loop so you can make yours 2.5 inches but this bias is quite slim so two inches is enough so i'll cut out as many as i'll be needing after cutting guys i'll go ahead and start placing the loop on these um lines that i already created so i've gone ahead to cut out as much loops that i'll be needing i'm going to go ahead and start placing the loops on um, the fabric so i'll start by placing it on the neckline which is number one because i'm not adding lining to um the back so i'm just going to place them and i'm just going to sew so i'll place one after the other i'll sew all the way down after doing that guys we're going to go ahead and cut out the sleeves so for the sleeves i have this band it's about 1.5 inches um width right and the length is the measurement that we took out from the shoulder before we started placing our point I added one and a half inches to that measurement so what I took out was five inches five times two which is for the front and the back is ten inches and I added one and a half inches to that measurement so what I have here is 11.5 inches I also went ahead to cut out this very long fabric the length of this fabric is about 3.5 inches so i cut out 4.5 inches and i used half inch to m one part of it all the way to the end so what i have left is 3.5 inches and the wideness of this fabric is about 60 inches this fabric is 60 inches long this is what we'll be using for our sleeves okay so what i'm going to do is to go ahead and pleat so you can decide to gather but what we can see on the thumbnail was pleated so before i start pleating i'm going to go ahead and mark about two inches from the end of this fabric remember i've already end the fabric go ahead and end it before you um, do this process to make it easier for you so i'll mark two inches like this and then i'll start pleating so i'll be marking three three inches and i'll place it like this so you can do whatever pleats you know how to do so guys i'm marking three three inches and i'm placing them on each other so whatever kind of pleats you know how to do go ahead and do it so i'm pleating this um long piece of fabric to the measurement of the band that i cut out earlier remember the band that i cut out earlier was 11.5 inches so make sure whatever you are pleating is the same size with the band that we cut out earlier so guys after pleating the sleeves in place this is what i have i also left two inches on the other end of um these sleeves okay so after pleating this is what i have 
you can go ahead and iron everything down okay so that the pleats will really come out well i also went ahead to pleat the second part of the sleeves so what i'll do is to bring in my band i'll be using this band in form of a bias i'm going to place the band on the um, wrong side of this fabric and i'll sew all the way around the band did not extend to the two inches that i left on the um, base of the sleeves so i'm going to place it on the wrong side and i'll sew all the way around after sewing i'm going to fold it back to the right side in form of a bias and i'm going to sew all the way down i repeat the same thing for the other um, side of the sleeves so guys for the back i've gone ahead to sew my loops in place and this is what it looks like so like i said before i'll not be adding lining to um, the back fabric so i'll be using my bias to um, turn the loops to the other side so what i'll do is to place the bias on the right side of the fabric i'll sew all the way down and i'll fold it back inside just to cover the back of the loops so after doing that guys this is what i have okay i also went ahead to repeat the same thing for the other side of the back piece and this is what the boat um, looks like so the next thing i'm going to do is to m the base of the top using my bias again i'm just going to place it on the right side sew it and i'll turn it um to the wrong side and i will sew so guys i've gone ahead to iron the posterior part using my tailor's arm and this is what it looks like and this is also what i did for the lining i went ahead to iron the seam out just like i did for the front and i've also gone ahead to iron my sleeves in place and i've used the band to turn it in form of a bias you can see that it looks neat on the outside and on the inside so this is the other sleeves i've gone ahead to repeat the same thing that i did for this other sleeves so what i'm going to do is to open up my front piece and i'm going to bring in the sleeves so the part that i did not pleat on the sleeves area i'm going to place it on this um that leg okay so just look at what i'm doing that is the reason why i did not pleat some part of the sleeves i left out two inches before i started pleating that two inches is where i am placing inside um the fabric i don't know if you understand but just look at what i'm doing so i'll place it like this i also take the other side of the sleeves and i'll place it like this as you are placing the um, sleeves on the front piece make sure you leave um, some space on the armhole area so you'll be able to sew um, the front and the back piece together after pinning guys this is what is going to look like okay this is what it will look like what i'm going to do is to go ahead and place my lining piece on this fabric just like you see me doing and i'll pin all the way around after pinning i'm going to go ahead and sew the neckline i'll sew the um waist area which is the back area i'll sew the side and i'll leave small opening that i'll be using to turn everything inside out so after sewing go ahead and notch and iron properly before you turn inside out i've gone ahead to do that guys and this is what i have after sewing so guys the next thing i'm going to do is to bring in my back piece i've gone ahead to m the base using my bias i'm going to place them on each other like this right sides facing right sides remember i told you guys earlier that my fabric is stretchy so i'm going to go ahead and pin after pinning i'll be using one inch as my stitching allowance so whatever um inches you left as your stitching allowance is what you are going to use to sew the front and the back remember i also said you should leave some space on the arm o area so you'll be able to stitch the front and the back so i'll go ahead and sew using the one inch allowance that i left after doing that guys this is what i have i've sewn the sides in place what i'm going to do now is to cut out um a bias that i'll be using to lace my loop so the rope that you'll be using to lace your loop should be as long as you want it i'll be using my bias i went ahead to fold the bias into two and i um, sewed on a straight line to the end 
I'll go ahead and lace my loop just like you see me doing. After doing that, guys, the next thing I'm going to do is to stitch the sleeves to the back um, part of this top. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold these sleeves back. So just look at what I'm doing. I'll fold it back like this. I'll put it inside just like this and I'll go ahead and stitch, okay? So I'll sew on the line that I already used to M so and if you are using a lining sorry i almost forgot if you are using a lining make sure you stitch your um sleeves to the back while sewing the lining so guys after pinning the sleeves in place i'll go ahead and stitch it down and yeah that is all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful don't forget to like this video if you have any question go ahead and leave it in the comment section thank you so much for watching please subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed um yeah i'll see you guys in the next one bye